All right, so I wanna start talking about HTTP requests. I realize not very many people are finished with the port scans, but you may want to skip ahead to HTTP requests. So let's take a look at the first one here, which is here. Now this is going to fetch a head request from the server. So you'd load this HTTP library and then you just find the syntax of it. You call the head method, you give it the URL to connect to. It will then make an HTTP request to that server and it'll send the response in a variable called response and an error if there is one in this error variable. Then you check the error. One thing that I discovered is if you want to ignore a result that comes back from a uh, function, Go will complain that the error is not used. So you either have to always use it with something like this, or you have to start the name of it with an underscore, which indicates you're going to ignore it. Anyway, um, then I just print the response header that comes back and the response body, which there won't be any for a head request. So this is the syntax, just from a demonstration page, um, for the head request. And if you run that, it goes to my server and replies with the header. And so here's the header part up here. This is the part that loads before every web page. It doesn't appear in the browser, but it tells the browser things like the version of the server that's being used and such. And down here's the body, and there is no body if you send a head request. If you send a post or a get, there would be a body, but the head request means you only want the header from the server, so it's not that commonly used. But I've just put it here as the simplest HTTP method to try. So, um, all right. Now we're gonna try get method, and I actually was writing my own server that would echo back everything that went there, and then I found this glorious thing called HTTP bin, which is bloody awesome. HTTP bin is great for people that want to learn how HTTP works. It's just a page somebody else put up there, and all it does is echo back what you sent. So I just opened it in my browser, and I'm going to see all the headers from my browser here. So I'm on a Macintosh using WebKit, Safari, Chrome. This is the user agent that Brave makes and so on. This is the origin of my IP address. That's the URL I went to. It's very nice. It's a way to test to see if your HTTP requests are working correctly in a very easy way. So that's what this one does, get zero. Let's take a look at this one. And get rid of the colors. All right, so all this does is go to that URL, httpbin.org slash get, and it sends a get request to it. And then just does exactly the same thing we've done before, it closes, when it's done, it prints out the body and then it prints out the um, response. So if you run that one, that is get zero. Okay, this is what it sent. And you can see that the user agent was go HTTP client 1.1. That's what the library puts in by default. So that's um, a decision made by designers there. All right, and so now we can fetch a target page off of my server. Now you can see what it's gonna look like if you just open this URL in a browser. It's just a page that doesn't show much of anything. It just says it's a target server used in security classes, but you can fetch it in Go with this head1.go. So let's all right, I'll just copy it from here. All right, so this one, I just use the same library and I use head. Oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, it's fetched the target page, it's get1.go. There we go. All right. time. All right. So the only difference here is I use HTTP get instead of HTTP head. And then I'm not bothering to print the header. I'm only printing out the body. 
So I make a body string equal the string of the body that comes back, and then I print it here after the word response. So that is get one. And so here's the response. And as you can see, it's the HTML code that prints out that simple page. So this is very easy and it automatically builds correct requests. So now we're getting slowly to doing brute force logins. So here's a login page. If I give it foo and bar and try to log in, then it opens another page and it says you have sent them but your login is rejected. Let me make this bigger for the video. All right. So my login's rejected. I knock it in. I can now try again. So there really are some correct credentials somewhere, but foo and bar is not correct. All right. So in this case, you can see that it put the credentials right up here in the URL bar. Login1.php, u equals foo, p equals bar. This is a way to pass parameters to web page. It is a very poor way to pass secret parameters like passwords, but it's what I did on this page and it's easy for us to write a program that will do that because all we have to do is add it to the request. So that's get to. So we make this two and this two and get rid of the colors and make my window bigger. All right, so all I do is I use the same get and I just put the username and password right there in the URL. So this is a very small change in the program. And so get to will fetch that page and you see it now tells me login rejected, you sent foo bar. So it's just showing me the source code of that. So I was able to send credentials up to the server in this simple case. So now I can make a password guessing script. All right, and this is get three. All right, so here I have a username of Dumbo and I have passwords of Goofy, Mickey, and Dumbo. And this is how you make an array of strings, the brackets and the curly braces. There's my URL, I have U equals, now I'm going to just add it together. You can add strings together. So I have URL, then I add the username, then I add the ampersand P equals, and then the password. And here is what a student was asking earlier, how to loop through a list of values. And you can just use the word range here for that. So I can, you make password in the range of passwords. And the I will count them, and the P will have those values. So now I can send it to the server here with my um, response get right here. And then I can just print all the answers. So one of them will get me in. So let's run that, get three. And off you go. So it tries them all, prints them off. And when you get them right, you'll see a flag. So the logins are rejected, logins are rejected, and there will come a time when you're no longer rejected and you get a flag. So that's the uh, HTTP methods, and then there are some challenges. So uh, there's the last thing to mention is the post method. I mentioned you shouldn't use in get to send up passwords. You can use post. So um, let's try this one, foo and bar. and I'm sending it up to HTTP bin so you can see the post. And in the post method, the data is sent in a separate section, bar and foo. And the point of that is it does not appear up here in the URL, which is a terrible place to put it because it will appear in server logs and bookmarks and other places where credentials should not be going. So that's all a post does, is considered a more secure way to send your data. So here's the post script that does it. All you do is you use post form here. And now you have the target URL here. And then you have URL values. This creates a list of 
values like a dictionary in Python, where you have a name and then a value, a name and then a value. This will format it correctly. So that will send the request to the HTTP get page. So that is post one. And so I'm just getting the setup here and the point is to see the parameters were correctly sent in a form. And now I can use that to, now that you know how to do it, you can then break into another server. So if you log into this one with foo and bar, then you're not going to the same login page as before. That was login one. This one is login two.php. It has the same format, though I'm rejected because the credentials were bad. It echoes back the credentials so you can see if your script is working. And then it gives you a chance to try again. So, uh, I see what's going on here. All right. So now we can make a password guessing script for post the same way, where you have a string and you just use a post form method instead. And again, you can try them all until you get in and find a flag. And then here's another one. You have to try all the two digit numbers until you get in. And then there's basic authentication, which is the old fashioned technique where it sends the username and password in a string that's base64 encoded. So there's a few challenges there to solve. All right. And oh, I see yes. OK, good. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to stop this recording and then let you folks work for a while.